Chancellor, what are you uh, most excited about taking on and tackling? What challenges are you most looking forward to as you assume the post? I'm very interested in raising the profile and visibility and promoting the excellence that already exists at UC Davis. And one of the ways we'll be doing that is by developing a strategic plan for the institution that will uh, tell us our pathway for the next five to ten years, taking into account some of the areas of existing strength and some areas of aspirational uh, strength that we'd like to proceed to. And I think that uh, we have a very uh, healthy set of resources already. We have a you know, the top veterinary medicine school in the world, the top agriculture program in the country, uh, excellent medical school, excellent uh, business and law and engineering and nursing and education programs. And I think uh, my job as I see will be sort of to knit those together into a coherent story that will raise not only raise the profile but continue to enhance the, the, the excellence and the experience that our students will have and train them for their, uh, to be leaders in their professions and also to be a good partner for economic development for the, the city, the state, and the, the region and the nation indeed. Now, it's no secret you're following a chancellor who was uh, laden with controversy. How are you going to reassure students that things are improving here at UC Davis? Well, I think, actually, I look at it a different way. I think uh, I'm very, uh, 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 I feel very good about the fact that I've been selected to be in this role, given that history, because what that says to me is that the people that are involved in the process of selecting me feel like I can be uh, uh, someone who can turn the page and move forward to a, fu a future that's more productive and and brighter, and I don't plan to spend a lot of time uh, thinking about what has happened in the past. We really want to think about the future of Davis, which I think is very bright. Now, it's also no secret that uh, the UC has pledged to protect undocumented students. Right. How are you going to pick up the ball on that? We'll be completely uh, compliant with the UC policies and procedures, as we always are. I think that's the right approach, in fact, from my own personal perspective, and I'm, uh, uh, I think we will have no uh, uh, issues in that respect. I think we will uh, follow the edicts of the president's office and the systems o system office and, and protect our undocumented students. Another issue that's common on college and university campuses across the country is this battle against uh, sexual assault on campus. And right. as I understand it, you and your wife plan to take that on head on. We do. Uh, we do plan to, to address that. Uh, and this idea actually came from my wife. I can't take credit for it. But we do. We are aware of the fact that sexual assault is a big problem on college campuses. I have two college-aged daughters, so I'm particularly aware and, and, and uh, cognizant of the issue and have counseled them many times about uh, uh, things to, to be uh, aware of themselves. Uh, we will take the perspective of trying to be proactive and trying to educate the student population, but also providing a supportive environment for people who may become victims uh, of such assaults. One of the other issues that has been dealt with on the campus here is the chancellor uh, being on outside boards, and as you see it, that, that brings value to the campus. I believe that's a very positive uh, situation for not just the chancellor, but uh, any faculty member or any university leader to be participating in uh, the business or the uh, external community. Uh, I will give a couple of examples of my previous institution uh, uh, as a result of my board service. Uh, 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 recently, uh, we closed an eight-figure gift for the naming of a building that came from uh, one of my fellow board members of the company that I serve uh, as a board member on. And, of course, tuition, also an issue. Uh, Tuition's uh, always an issue. And, yeah. and uh, you know, you have talked about doing your best to keep it in check. We, we like to do that. The challenge is going to be, uh, there are several challenges. One, um, uh, state contributions to higher ed are declining or have declined over a long period of time. At the same time, costs have increased uh, and with inflation, but also the costs have increased because of the services that students expect and, in, in, in fact, are entitled to. We talked about uh, sexual assault. Uh, counseling and services that are associated with the needs that the students have are not free. So we have to find a way to balance that, uh, and then one of the ways... Uh, I was not involved in that decision. We have a pretty rigorous process that was followed to, to, to identify the right uh, salary. Uh, Professor Katehi is a member of the National Academy of Engineering and is a uh, world-renowned scholar in our field, and that salary is certainly consistent with uh, others of that same uh, stature, uh, not only in the UC system, but across the country. As an engineering dean, I'm familiar with those salaries, her salary is not in any way out of bounds. Uh, and how it falls on the fundraising. Lot, these days you see challenges from a lot of time fundraising. How much time will you, will you spend fundraising versus government? Uh, I would suspect uh, it would be a significant fraction of my time. As a dean, I'm going to spend about a third of my time fundraising. I would suspect that as a chancellor, uh, I'm going to have a leadership responsibility for the entire campus, it would be at least that, probably more. 
Uh, as you know, with uh, budget challenges from uh, sources from the state becoming increasingly uh, an issue, we have to seek other sources of, of funding to make the university operate, and philanthropy is a key part of that. And I will have to be playing with your goal and achieving that tomorrow. Sharon Byron, I see Davis. Um, what are you going to do for the students to make them feel a little more at ease about your administration compared to, I mean, there's, there's so much tension right. with the kids. Right, so again, we're turning the page, and we're not going to look backward, but I think we've already started a fairly aggressive campaign including social media and, and other ways to communicate with the students to let them know that I'm here and I'm accessible and I want to hear from them and I want to meet them. Uh, I've had a couple of events already at the Chancellor's of Residence. I've had uh, activities on campus uh, uh, at the EU and various other places. Uh, I think I have a couple of students who are serving as my liaison who are helping me interact with the students. Uh, I have regular meetings with the students uh, that we have established with the campus newspaper. Government leadership and others to, to help them uh, address that issue. But I've never, in my whole career, I've never had any problems relating to or engaging with students. I can see that as well. Hi, Chancellor. Uh, Richard Patton from Sacramento Business Journal. In terms of uh, economic development, you see Davis being a partner with Sacramento. Right. What lessons do you bring from Georgia Tech? Or yeah. The yeah, you may be familiar with uh, uh, a delegation that the mayor. Sacramento uh, led and visited the Miami DC uh, initiative that we call it, uh, we call it Georgia Tech Technology Square, which is a partnership between the university, the business community, and the city uh, to uh, provide for economic development as well as uh, innovation opportunities and sort of commercialization and business opportunities uh, for, uh, for the university. Um, I'm envisioning something similar here. We can make it happen. I hope that uh, we have the right sort of um, enthusiasm about those ideas. Uh, at my previous institution, that particular uh, project was transformative. Took a fairly um, uh, run-down, uh, depressed area of the city and transformed it into a highly vibrant, uh, little learning workplace environment for not only the campus but also for the surrounding community. Destination uh, uh, various uh, corporate partners are coming to co locate uh, in that area and partner with the university and the city. And so I hope that we can do something similar here in, in Davis and Sacramento. And how, I know a lot of startups here have uh, moved on and gone to Silicon Valley. Mm -hmm. What role can you play as chan chancellor to keep some of the startups and technology that comes from UC Davis here in the region? Well, I think uh, companies, uh, startups, and even large companies uh, locate themselves where advantageous resource-wise. So uh, if we can make the argument that workforce uh, is here and available for those companies, uh, we can have some discussions with the uh, government, government of the area to make the tax incentives available for the companies. Uh, and I think uh, we can use those sorts of uh, inducements to help those companies think about staying here. Although I would argue that uh, as long as we keep them in close proximity, uh, we're still benefit. How will UC Davis ensure that Janet Napolitano's pledge to protect undocumented California students becomes or remains a reality? Well, the President's pledge is our pledge. We're part of the system and we will be, we will be compliant with all you know, system policies. And I personally am dedicated to this issue as well, so I think we won't have an issue there. Uh, I think it's really important for us to remain with place that uh, welcomes people from all backgrounds, particularly uh, folks with disadvantaged uh, backgrounds such as the uh, undocumented students. Uh, tuition, has been <laughs> tuition has been a big issue uh, on campus for you know uh, a, dec a decade, a yeah. rising tuition. Yeah. And uh, uh, it's, it's very easy to uh, you know have a, a chancellor that is making, you know, I haven't looked at your tax returns, but uh, a substantial amount of yeah. money. Uh, uh, how, how can you ensure parents that you relate to uh, the middle class, the lower middle class, uh, which are in most need of uh, help in their, their enroll? Uh, let me unpack that a bit. First, let me say that I have two college-age students. I'm paying tuition myself, um, so I'm sensitive to this issue. Um, I will also say that uh, our tuition uh, in the UC system has held pretty stable for the last several years. We had an increase this year, but the first in several years. Uh, when tuition has not increased, costs have, have, also have increased at the same time. So 
order to provide the best possible environment and, and, and um, uh, services to our students, we have to be mindful of that. Uh, I think that uh, in general, if you look across the country, the um, state contributions to, to higher ed have declined. And uh, if we're going to maintain the same level of quality, the same level of services, uh, we have to make that up somehow. And tuition, unfortunately, has been uh, one of the ways we've uh, been able to do that. Now, other things fit in that bucket as well, including philanthropy uh, and, and, and other sources. Uh, resources. I think that uh, the good news is uh, you see Davis uh, for several years now uh, for families earning $65,000 a year or less. Essentially, those students and those families uh, tend to be virtually free. And I think we want to maintain that sort of uh, trajectory going forward, if not increase that. And this is in line with some of the headlines you've seen from the University of Michigan and other places about uh, making affordability uh, a key uh, priority for the university. Yes. Lucy Davis enrollment is Jeff Hudson Capital Program. Lucy Davis enrollment is up at Students still plans for the enrollment to grow larger. Currently, the vacancy rate in Davis for off campus student apartments is below 1%. That's right. I'm aware that the university has plans to build on campus housing uh, for uh, both students and for faculty and staff. Your thoughts on this as the incoming chancellor? So, I had a, a very good meeting with the mayor of the city and the city manager over dinner at the residence uh, a few weeks ago to talk about these issues. Uh, we are working together to try to provide an environment that, that can house our students uh, and make them uh, have, a, have a, a very uh, uh, vibrant community uh, around Davis. Uh, I think part of the Sacramento initiative might have some impact there. We may be able to explore some housing opportunities a little bit of a distance away, but they might relieve some of the stress here uh, locally in the city. Uh, don't have a specific plan or specific uh, uh, solution to the, to the issues, but I will say that we have had good conversations with, with the city and we're working together to find a solution. And where do you see enrollment going in the next five years? Well, I don't see enrollment, well, uh, you may have heard that our, our, our state enrollment has been capped at 18%, so I'm pretty sure that's uh, going to be a limitation in the short term. Uh, I don't see significant undergraduate growth uh, beyond our already announced plans uh, that are in our strategic plan for 2020. Sort of thing. Uh, but we have to have those discussions and have those discussions not just here at Davis, but it's a system level discussion to see what sort of missions and capacity the other universities and system have to meet the needs of the state. Uh, we may have some growth at the graduate level, depending on uh, the growth in the research enterprise, uh, but the undergraduate level is probably not significant growth beyond what you've already done. We talked about increasing the uh, number of minority students who graduate with STEM degrees. How will you recruit more students of color to use those? Well, I think uh, the goal uh, is to reach uh, the level of uh, uh, terms of parity. So we want to have parity among our students of color uh, at Davis with whatever the state uh, numbers are. And I've been, throughout my career, the champion of a number of programs that have had uh, great success at my previous institution, both in terms of undergraduate research, in terms of uh, uh, summer bridge activities, uh, recruitment, uh, uh, scholarships, fellowships, of course. So we'll, we'll be implementing all of the above uh, to the extent that we can here today, but subject to the constraints that we have from, from legal issues like the proposition to one and other constraints that we may have. I, I'm very excited about the possibilities here. We just had a discussion with the Council of Vice Chancellors about some of the things we might do and some of the, some of the programs we might uh, port over from my previous experience to UC Davis, I think it had an impact. It, it's easy to see you uh, as an outsider because you've spent so much uh, time, obviously, in Georgia. But you did spend some time at Berkeley. I did. Uh, any experience there that has carried over in preparation for a job in California at a, at a University of California? Well, my Berkeley experience is 26 years old, so it's been a while since I've lived in California. Uh, but I do think uh, some of that will, will help me carry forward. I, I sort of have some vague familiarity with the system and the